so this is one of our favorites, SCAP CARS. CARS stands for Controlled Articular Rotations. It's from Functional Range Conditioning. And basically what we're doing is we're trying to make the biggest circle with a certain joint without moving anything else. So it's great for control. Um, we particularly love this, the scapula CARS uh, because Scapular movement changes the positioning of the rib cage, uh, which can impact breathing and can impact weight shifting. It also supports shoulder movement. So these are kind of a big deal. We're gonna start really basic. I would encourage you to also start really basic and then make them more interesting as you go along. So he's gonna bring his arms down by his side. It's always easier to do this stuff seated. He's gonna take his shoulder blades up towards his ears. That's elevation. He's gonna hold that elevation as he brings his shoulder blades back for retraction. So they're up and back. He's gonna slide them down towards his back pockets. He's gonna keep them down in depression as he spreads them wide into protraction. So we're gonna start in a square because circles are hard. So he's gonna go up, back, down, and forward. And once that gets easy, he's going to start making it more of a circle. You'll notice his elbows are staying really straight. You'll see that they'll want to bend. His head is staying nice and still. His spine is staying still. His ribs are moving, but not because he's initiating the movement from his ribs, but his shoulder blades are moving his ribs. Now we're going to reverse this. So they go forward, down, back, and up, protraction, depression, retraction, and elevation. Just do one more like that. You wanna be able to move on your absolute in ranges, but also have a nice consistency and speed as you're getting there. So the next level, he's gonna reach his arms straight forward. Now, when the arms are out, you'll see that they're wanting to do a lot of things to make up for the lack of scap movement. The arms should stay relatively in the same spot. It is going to move, but only because the shoulder blade is moving it. So we're gonna do the same thing starting in a square. Up, back into retraction, depression, protraction. Once that gets easy, he can make it a little more smooth. And you'll notice his arms are moving, but he's not initiating the movement with his arms. He's initiating it with his shoulder blades. Good. Go ahead and reverse. Can you feel what's happening to your rib cage as you change? Yeah. These are kind of a big deal. We don't think about it. We never think about our shoulder blades. But for shoulder health, even lower back health, these are important. Good. You want to show them closed chain? So that's called open chain because there's nothing opposing my hands. A closed chain exercise is more difficult. I don't know, it probably took me a couple of months, I think, to go from being able to do that pretty easily to being able to do this easily. Um, this is a harder position, so I wouldn't really even try this until you're comfortable there. And, and you, know, you might find you also need to videotape yourself doing this without your shirt on uh, just to actually see what's happening and make sure that what you think you're doing, you are actually doing. Yeah, and just to kind of piggyback on that, when your hands are locked into place, any way that you might have been accommodating the movement before is gonna be super highlighted here. So it could be very confusing because you, you're like, mm, I'm doing it the way I've been doing it, but it's not happening. Um, so just be aware of that. So he's gonna do the same action here. We're gonna start with retraction. So he's gonna keep his elbows straight. He's gonna retract. So bring them together, your rib cage will go down. Mm -hmm. So you see his rib cage drops down. He's gonna take them forward towards his ears. He's gonna keep them forward towards his ears as he pushes up into protraction, and then he'll slide them into his back pockets. So again, retraction, elevation, protraction, and depression. And once he's got it, he can kind of smooth it out and in the beginning, your head's going to want to do a lot. Your lumbar spine's going to want to do a lot. Your mid spine is going to want to do a lot. Elbows are also, they may want to bend. So it's just good to be aware of all of those things. So filming yourself is helpful. Go ahead and reverse it. Now, if you're doing any kind of pressing in any direction or pulling, 
These are a must. Let's do one more. Those are getting pretty good. Yeah, and as you said, one of the things I noticed over time is it would hurt a lot less in my mid back. Mm -hmm. In other words, now when I do it, if I'm done, I don't feel anything and there's no discomfort. It's not like I put my mid back into spasm where my trapezius and rhomboids are fired and angry because they're really not, they're, they're just not that involved and they're not being you know, overly taxed. So um, I'd say be patient with this one. I certainly, I don't know, it probably took me, I don't really remember, easily six months, nine yes. months to, to really go from being able to do the seated open chain uh, to the closed chain.